Hi, this is David Harper of Bonnock Turtle with an illustration of the partially funded synthetic collateralized debt obligation. In previous tutorials, I've illustrated the cash CDO and the synthetic balance sheet CDO. However, this structure that you're looking at is more typical of, more representative of, the kind of structure that has imploded in the wake of the recent credit crunch. And so we can look at this structure by starting with the reference portfolio. But before we get distracted by details, keep in mind the basic bargain, which is that investors on the right have purchased credit risk or exposed themselves to the default risk on the loans in this reference portfolio. So in exchange for that, they expect a higher yield. So we start with the reference portfolio. We need an originating bank. The original originating bank was JP Morgan in 1997 with their bistro structure. And the originating bank then creates two tranches, a smaller funded tranche and a larger super senior tranche. To give you a sense of the scale on that original JP Morgan structure, the reference portfolio is 10 billion. The funded tranche was only 700 million or about 7%. So this super senior tranche can be 80, 85, 90% or more of the overall reference portfolio. So if we look at the funded tranche, because what we mean by funded tranche is this funded tranche refers to the relationship with the special purpose vehicle and the investors. The super senior tranche does not. Unlike the cash CDO, the loans are not transferred or sold to the special purpose entity. Instead, the originating bank is purchasing credit protection with credit default swaps. So in regard only to this funded tranche, the originating bank is pay paying CDS premiums. It's buying credit protection. That's the blue solid line, solid because those premiums are going to be paid regardless. In exchange for the credit protection, which is the payment of recovery if and when there are defaults on the underlying loans that are referenced by just the funded tranche. That's in red dotted because that's contingent on defaults. Where does the special purpose field get the collateral or capital to pay for those defaults? From the investors. So the special purpose vehicles issuing securities to the investors as before in tranche classes. So we've got a senior tranche of securities here that represents the uh, lower risk, higher quality, lower yield tranche, and the residual is the higher risk, lower credit quality, higher yield tranche. So the investors are purchasing securities, so their purchase, as represented here by the green solid line, is their purchase price is given to the special purpose vehicle, and that's deposited with the trustee and so this becomes the high quality collateral. It, typically in these structures, the trustee does need a swap dealer to, man, uh, to manage the liquidity risk, but that's not important here. The important part is the collateral's here with the trustee. And so the first claim on this collateral goes to the funded tranche when there are defaults on these loans that are referenced by the funded tranche. So when we say this is a partially funded CDO, that what we mean is that of the entire reference portfolio, which may be, let's say, 10 billion in the case of that bistro structure, less than 10% is funded, which is to say is covered by collateral because that's the only amount that the investors collectively purchased. The rest, in this case the majority, is the unfunded super senior tranche. And the theory is that the super senior tranche is relatively safe because it's subordinated by the funded tranche. So the funded tranche can, can absorb those initial defaults. So in a well diversified portfolio, the super senior tranche ought to be relatively safe. safe. So it's unfunded, meaning we can't point to any collateral that's going to cover it. And the originating bank may retain it. And further, the originating bank, even though it may perceive it to be safe, may decide to purchase credit protection on it with, you guessed it, credit default swaps. So it can pay 
uh, CDS Premium to the Super Senior Protection Seller. So that's just the C that's just another counterparty who's decided to sell credit protection on just the Super Senior tranche. So in theory, they'll cover losses as indicated by the red line. Okay, in theory, it's complicated, but it looks pretty good. We've got a portfolio of mortgage loans. We've carved out the riskiest piece into a funded tranche. Investors have basically purchased that risk and deposited collateral against that. The safest tranche here can be retained by the originating bank. Sounds good. What goes wrong? Well, two or three things go wrong. First, obviously, these loans were not nearly as safe as they were perceived. So the default rates were much higher. Related to that correlation risk is the fact that the diversification benefits were overestimated. These loans tended to default together in a greater magnitude than was perceived. Okay, so that's an underestimation of the probability of default. That's an underestimation of correlation risk. But let's get to the two more nuanced and problematic causes, and that is first, this super senior tranche, just the value of it is very has leveraged exposure to the value of the funded tranche. And so as these loans start to default, you don't necessarily need the defaults to eat through the funded tranche in order for the super senior tranche to plummet in value. As this funded tranche starts to deteriorate because there's so much leverage here, the super senior tranche just starts to deteriorate in market value. So that's the first problem, even before the defaults reach it. And that's what we've seen in the subprime. These, there's been a, this mark to market has reduced these values because they originally valued on the idea that they were very safe, high quality assets. And the second problem really pertains to basis risk because you notice even if this deteriorates well you could say okay but the originating bank has purchased credit protection with the CDS seller well basis risk is when the derivative that you purchased gives you imperfect protection against that underlying asset and we there's almost always basis risk with derivatives and what we saw is that or what we're seeing is that these, these uh, CDSs that are purchased, these credit default swaps that are purchased, do not provide perfect protection against the declines or even plummets in value on the super senior tranche. So again, that first nuanced problem was the fact that the super senior tranche has highly exposed in terms of market value to deterioration in the underlying reference portfolio. And the second one is that the credit default swap has basis risk and maybe provides imperfect protection against that plummet in value. So this is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. I hope that was a helpful illustration of the partially funded synthetic CDO. Thanks for your time.